Hey everyone, Mr. Schachter here to discuss an application of derivatives in economics. The first function I'd like to talk about is the cost function. So the cost function, which notationally we represent as C of X, is the money a company spends to produce a good or a service. Average costs can be calculated by taking the cost of producing a certain number of items and dividing by the quantity of items. For example, if I produced uh, 100 TVs, I would take the cost of producing 100 TVs, I would divide it by 100, and this would equal the average cost, average cost of um, one TV. Just TVs, for example. If I took the cost, it took uh, to you know how much did it take to to make a hundred of them, and uh, divide it by a hundred, and that gives me the average cost of one of the TVs. An average increase in cost is basically if I wanted to uh, take a look at a different value. So instead of 100 TVs, I wanted to say, what about 120 TVs? All right, so I'm going to take the cost of 100 TVs, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up another 20 TVs. So this value right here, C plus H, is basically the cost of producing your original 100 plus a little bit more, which in our case, let's just assume we want to make uh, 120 TVs, the cost of 120 these look pretty messy, let's just fix them. Cost of producing 120 TVs minus the cost of producing the 100 TVs that I had originally examined. And if I divide this by H, which is the fact that I now um, changed it by 20 TVs, I added an additional 20 TVs, this value right here is going to give me the average increase in cost if I were to change my, my production level from 100 TVs to 120 TVs. So you take the cost of producing the 120th, the cost of producing the 120th, minus the cost of producing the 100 TVs, and what you're left with there is the cost of producing your, your next 20 TVs. Divide that by 20, and that gives you the cost of producing um, one TV in this new context. Keep in mind that this is different from if I were to just make from zero to 20 TVs, right? From zero to 20 TVs, my cost as a company could be much, much greater if I was trying to produce 100 to 120 TVs. So that's why this formula is a little bit different than just simply taking C of 20 divided by 20. Because depending on when in the production level we are, it may cost our company more to start making more TVs. Okay. Marginal cost is, uh, is the big one for us. And what marginal cost essentially does is it estimates the cost of producing one unit beyond the present level of production. So first of all, if we assumed we were making 100 TVs again, okay, 100 TVs, what marginal cost would actually do is it would give us an estimation, estimate, for the cost of producing the 101st TV. Okay, so marginal cost estimates the cost of producing one additional TV. And it's very important you understand that this is just an estimation. Okay, this is not the actual value, this is just an estimation. Well, it turns out that in order to calculate this, you just have to take the derivative and plug in your value. Okay, so the derivative of the cost function, um, which we know to be the limit as h approaches 0 of c of x plus h minus c of x over h, this gives you uh, an approximation for the cost of that 101st TV. So let's be clear. C prime of x, or let's say C prime of 100, C prime of 100. C prime of 100 is giving you the cost of the 101st TV. So by plugging, in the, uh, by plugging 100 into the derivative, you're measuring the rate of change after 100, which is going to be the 101st television. So if you plug 100 into the derivative, you're getting an approximation for that 101st television. If you plug 200 in the derivative, you're getting an approximation for that 201st television, so on and so forth. It's notable to add that you can calculate the actual cost of that 101st television, right? All you have to do is take the cost of x plus h, which is basically the 100 televisions that we had, plus one more television, and subtract the cost of producing the original 100 televisions. So c of 101 
minus c of 100, it's tough the c's look like parentheses, um, equals the actual, actual cost of the 101st TV. Okay, so you can actually find the real number, um, but derivatives are a much faster way to make estimations for large quantities of values. Uh, and it's going to come really in handy uh, later on in, uh, in, the, in the video. The next function I'd like to talk about is revenue, which is going to be R of X. Revenue is defined to be the money coming in from selling a good or a service. So all the money that comes into the company from selling this. Um, revenue specifically is equal to price times quantity, right? How much are you selling an item for? How many of them are you selling? Price times quantity. Marginal revenue, same deal as marginal cost. When you see this word marginal, it means derivative, okay? Marginal means derivative. Marginal revenue estimates the increase in revenue that will result from selling one additional unit, okay? So one more. It's just an estimation, but the actual revenue can be calculated by just taking R of X plus H and subtracting R of X. So for example, if you wanted to know how much more revenue would this company make if they made um, you know, let's say you're selling 300 refrigerators and you plug 300 into the derivative. 300 goes into the derivative. I'm actually just going to move it down here. So 300 goes into the derivative. What is this measuring? So if, if you plug 300 in the derivative of revenue, it's actually estimating. So this is an estimate of revenue um, for producing the 301st, we'll stick with TVs because I like TVs, 301st TV. So by plugging 300 in the derivative, you're getting an estimation of the revenue increase or decrease. Hopefully it's an increase. It's positive, it's an increase. It's negative, it's a decrease in revenue um, of producing that 301st TV. Um, again, however, you can find the actual, the actual revenue um, for producing the 301st TV is just equal to the revenue for producing 301 TVs minus the revenue you got for producing the, th the first 300, right? Um, so you can actually calculate the answer. So just know the difference between the two is that a marginal revenue is a, a estimation. It's not an actual value. Last one we'll consider is profit. Um, profit is the money left from selling a good or a service after the cost of producing that good or service has been subtracted. Um, profit is equal to revenue minus costs, right? So the profit of a company is all the money they came in, that came in, uh, after they deduct all their uh, the costs that they had. How much did it cost to make them? Did you have to turn on the machines to make the products? Whatever costs were associated with making that product. Marginal profit measures the rate of change of the profit after looking at one additional item. And again, you can find the actual profit by just doing P of X plus H minus P of X. Let's look at an example. So here's an example. It says, suppose the cost of producing X stoves in your shop is given by this cubic polynomial, and your shop is currently producing 10 stoves a day. About how much extra will it cost to produce one more stove? And how much will it actually cost to produce that 11th stove? So if we want to calculate an approximation about how much, about how much, we want to plug the derivative, or we need the derivative function, and we're going to plug in 10. So let's go ahead and calculate the derivative. The derivative is 3x squared minus 12x plus 15. And if I want to calculate the, uh, the rate of change for producing one more stove, I plug 10 into the derivative, okay? And if I plug 10 into the derivative, I get this right here, which is equal to 3 times 10 squared is 100 minus 12. So oh, that should be a 10. Sorry about that. It should be a 10 uh, plus 15, um, which if I squish this down, this is equal to 300 minus 120 plus 15, which is equal to 195, 195 
Um, this is a cost. This is dollars. So what does this mean? This means that approximately my company would have to pay an extra $195 to make an 11th stove. Okay? Well, let's calculate how much it actually takes because this is an approximation. Approximation, okay? Um, to calculate the actual cost of the 11th stove, all I have to do is just calculate what is the cost of producing 11 stoves minus the cost of producing 10. Okay? And uh, this, if I, if I calculate, I just have to plug 11 into my cost function. So let's actually just uh, grab a calculator. So let's. All right, so we have this in Y1. Let's now calculate the cost of the 11th item. So we'll go to vars, y vars function y1 of 11 minus vars, y vars function y1 of 10. And we get an answer of 220, 220 dollars. So this is the actual value of the 11th stove versus the approximation of 195 dollars. So you may ask yourself, okay, well, it's close, but what is the purpose for this? Why does this exist if we can just go and calculate the actual cost? What you have to remember is that the derivative is useful for an infinite number of x values, right? So if we're trying to maximize profit, let's say, instead of plugging in 11 stoves, 12 stoves, 13 stoves and trying to figure out when the profit margin is going to be the greatest. And by just calculating the derivative, you can create a function that basically gives you profit for any number of stoves you produce. And that's very useful because then you can maximize your profit.